Kaoji Marioji. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to present my solution. And here is agenda. I will talk about myself, an overview of my solution, neural network, data, and post-processing. First of all, so I talk about myself. I have a Bachelor of Arts in Jap Japanese literature, not in computer science or mathematics, but I have worked as a developer for 30 years at Biproji, with her first name was Unisys until last year. For the last 10 years, I have been working in research development of my company, writing programs for combinational optimized problems, optimization problems, deep learning, and parallel computing. So in the last year, I developed a millimeter wave radar model, a module for uh, simulation for autonomous driving and a library that is topology to convert flows to strings and run my company's programming concur. And so from this, I gained experience in 3D graphics and algorithms. These experiences were useful for this competition. And so outside of the company, I wrote codes for PyCubo to make it faster. And I also wrote a book in past. Okay, so here is an overview of my solution. So I used 3D, 3D unit as a neural network data augmentation with random position and rotations, and post-process which removes false positives. I want to talk about details. First, the neural network. For the neural network, I choose 3D unit. But so, however, now I don't think I don't think so 3D unit was effective for this competition. The shape of the blood vessel is a tube. Um, just wait, please. Yeah, like this. So, and so there are no large structures other than blood vessels in the kidney. Um, I think so. For example, so the simple uh, the shape of the red blood cell, 3D would be useful to determine whatever it was a disc or a ring or a red blood cell shape, I think. So why did I choose 3D unit is so <laughs> a simple reason. A colleague of mine was writing a program for rheumatology diagnosis, and um, I wondered if 3D unit could be used to improve the accuracy of this in the future. Okay, so about neural network. I use 3D, 3D unit. The input shape is 128 and 138 and 32. This size is a limitation of my computer. So my neural network features are <laughs> just the use of ResNet and the use of upsampling up only. So training was performed using focal loss and cosine decay scheduling. Epoch size is 700 and batch size is 4. The training takes over two weeks on my computer. Okay, next data. To find out that so 3D data is used in this competition, I felt very happy because 2D data augmentation creates so incorrect data, but 3D data augmentation can create correct data. Data augmentation in 3D is easy, only changing the position and angle of the camera. 
So um, in deep learning, so the quantity of data is important. But if the quantity is the same, the quality of data will be important, I think. So in 3D graphics, the camera position and the angle are represented by I, I, so center and up, as shown in the figure like this. So the same argument are used in the OpenGL API on the right. So in programming, I simply created a four by four matrix and multiply it to convert to camera coordinate coordinates. So in this competition, I want to know where the position in camera coordinate is in global coordinates. So I use NumPy invert functions. Okay, about data. My program generated so 30,000 data every four epochs by changing the camera position and angle. Epoch size is so 700. So my program uses 5 million data. So generating 5 million data is very time consuming. So I use match processing and NumPy functions to speed up the process. So, uh, so I use the Kidoni 1 dance, Kidoni 2, and Kidoni 3 sparse for training. I, I thought so multiple patients and multiple manufacturers were needed. Okay, last, post-processing. So in the previous slide, I said that I use sparse data for training. Using sparse data means that there is a possibility of false negatives. So I improved that. I lowered the threshold. But so this lower threshold may cause false positives. So I created a process to look for positive chunks and remove the smaller ones as false positives. The process to look for chunks was created with so depth first search. Uh, so the reason I thought small chunks are false positives is that in order for blood vessels to uh, blood to flow, the blood vessels must be connected. If they are not connected, the blood cannot flow. So they may be so not blood vessels. Therefore, my program removes these chunks. So um, my program also needs to think about false negatives. So I thought about creating a process to repair these gaps, but so I couldn't. So this was due to the poor performance of my predictor. I should recreate the predictor before updating the post-processing. But so that was not possible because of the long learning time. But so I think you already have great predictors from this competition. If we use these great predictors, so I think we can develop an effective blood vessel annotation support app First, predict blood vessels with predictors, uh, not mine. Second, find chunks like my program. Third, remove unconnected, distantly placed chunks. Fourth, repair gaps automatically. And professionals judge they are so removing are correct or not. The predicted blood vessels may be thinner or thicker. Professionals tune the threshold to match them to actual blood vessels. So with this, I believe that the annotation of blood vessels can be made more efficient. That's all for my presentation. Please question. So 